Hi, I'm Dr. Phil Parker, and today I'm going to be talking about Functional Neurological Disorder, or FND. It's a fascinating and difficult condition, which has a, a checkered history. Particularly around the time of Freud, uh, it, it had a different name. It was called Conversion Disorder, or Conversion Issue. Um, and by that, what he meant was there was some kind of conflict within the psychology of a person, and that resulted in creation of symptoms and, and from that it kind of led into the idea that uh, FND or conversion disorders was somehow all about your emotions all about you know repressed id, ego conflicts and when we need to part that conversation because things have moved on a lot so functional neurological disorder fundamentally looks like someone has uh, a really significant neurological issue like Parkinson's or MS. The symptoms can be identical and epilepsy are a very common one. It is the cause of uh, huge amounts of people seeking neurological consults. So it's the second most common one, headaches is number one. The problem with functional neurological disorders from a diagnostic point of view is that when you scan people you can't find anything so there's nothing physical to see on the traditional kind of diagnostic scans that one would do this then naturally led to the idea well these people are making it up that it's just in their mind and for a long time people with functional fnd were thrown into the basket of, of people who've got mental health issues because nothing could be found there's been a real rethink about this recently and um, the first kind of major rethink was partly because of the computer age this idea of uh, hardware and software so if we look at classically at say ms or parkinson's disease there's a hardware problem there's a problem with the wiring it just doesn't function properly or the problem with the transmitters so there's there's a problem in the, the physicality and that identifies where why there's an issue with symptoms but now that we understand about software, we can have a computer like the one I'm looking at here that is functionally, structurally sound. But if the software is corrupted, or badly installed, or there's a virus, then the computer won't work. So that has an effect on how the computer functions and therefore gives identical symptoms. And this is really important. With functional neurological disorder, the, the level of disability is exactly the same as somebody with MS or Parkinson's disease or epilepsy. Quality of life is impaired long term and kind of an additional issue is for years people weren't believed so not only were they physically impaired uh, but nobody really believed them or knew what to do with them because how do you give a drug when you can't work out what the process is that needs the medication? If you want to know uh, a bit more about this, then do check out my conversation with the amazing Dr. Sarah Lisden, uh, who is a specialist in all this. Uh, check out the Mind Body Connection podcast. She talks about this brilliantly. But let's come back to this software hardware thing. So the idea was, OK, so we've got hardware problems and we've got software problems, because if the software doesn't work, then you get similar problems as, as if the hardware is broken. And this opened up a whole new conversation about FND being, well, OK, well, this we can understand this in a different way. Maybe there's a problem with signal processing. So it's not just these people have got mental health issues. Maybe there's a, a problem with the way the brain processes those signals. We know that this shows up in all sorts of other areas in people's health. And that opened the door to moving people from this something wrong with them mentally to okay well this is a, it's a processing issue and with that a kind of recognition of well maybe we need to approach this differently this more recent research has moved this conversation on further because and, and this is what sarah says very interestingly in her conversation with me maybe it's not that there isn't a physical issue going on maybe it's that we just don't yet have the technology to see it and as the technology advances in diagnostic imaging, we're starting to see in certain cases of FMD that there are structural changes in all sorts of places in the brain, whereas before we went, oh, there's nothing wrong with you. 
well actually the problem was we can't see what's wrong with you so this opens up a, a, a much more kind of apologetic uh, for how it had been dealt with in the past and a recognition that you know kind of independent of whether it's structural whether it's hardware or software it doesn't actually really matter the problem is that people are having really significant life changes health changes and how do we help and that's the question how do we what do we do to help people who've got this issue uh, to help them move forwards now one of the first things to do has to be to believe them uh, and if you listen to a lot of my uh, podcast interviews with people this is a very common thing that comes up when your when your patients your clients tell you they have something believe them because symptoms are very very difficult to measure they are a personal thing so the best measurement is do you feel it or not if somebody is saying you know i can't move my leg or you know i'm having these incredible headaches yeah well great they have the question then is okay what can we do to help you so this is a real kind of beginning point of functional neurological disorders and diseases the main thing as i say is this this conversation has moved on massively from oh it's all in your mind because we can't see anything to oh okay maybe it's a software issue too oh maybe it's a software and a hardware issue so if you know someone who's dealing with this or if you are someone who's who is dealing with this things have moved on medicine is starting to see this very differently and thinking about what are the ways that we can help these signals to process better and interestingly there are lots of things you can do to start to make the brain process better so with chronic pain for instance I spend a lot of time helping people to retrain their brain to slow down certain pathways and to enhance other ones that are more about health and well-being uh, to switch on and off neurotransmitters so there's all sorts of interesting research that can be taken from one field into this field to look for new solutions that might help people who are suffering with this very difficult disease i hope that's an interesting starting point for anybody watching